Hi friends, let us discuss the answer for question number 37 that I gave yesterday. It falls under General Studies Paper 2, International Relations. It's 10 marks question, so try to be as precise as possible. Instead of explaining something, you can draw the map or diagram to make the answer short. At the same time, you should try to show all the points that you know to the evaluator. Try to keep the introduction and conclusion very short as it is a 10 marks question. And as the prelims is coming in another one week, so those students who are writing the prelims may actually no need to uh, see these answers. You can wait for one week and after prelims is over, you can see all these seven videos at once. Friends, so the question is, as China has grown rapidly in the last two decades between 2000 to 2020, the growth of China has been tremendous because of which its relationship with India and USA has changed. Try to explain the statement clearly. Then tell whether you think that this kind of change relationship is leading to a kind of cold war. Cold war. Okay. So first thing you should explain, do you really think China is growing rapidly? Try to prove that China is growing rapidly. Try to prove it. Then tell how its relationship with India and USA is changing. Second part. Third part, tell whether if you think a new cold war is coming up, explain the proof for that. Why you are thinking so? So three parts are there in this question. So in the first part, as I told you, uh, explain the proof for China is growing rapidly or China has grown rapidly in the last two decades. But try to write three to four points, not, not more than that, because you should focus more on the Cold War part. So one reason is GDP. You can say the GDP of China has grown rapidly. For example, in 2000, the GDP of China was almost similar to India. But now the GDP of China is almost 14.5 trillion dollars which is five times that of India, five times, because India is around 2.7 trillion, so five times of India. Even when you compare with USA, in 2000, the GDP of China is almost 20 times lesser than USA, 20 times, whereas now it is just 1.5 times less than USA. Similarly, the defense expenditure. For example, last year China has spent almost 267 billion dollars on defense so almost like four times more than India when you compare to USA it's almost one-third of US's expenditure when you take the Navy almost China has got 350 warships and submarines almost the highest in the world even the Air Force almost 2000 aircrafts the combat aircrafts are there with China so even the technological capabilities of China is increasing in the manufacturing service sector so overall China has grown rapidly in the last two decades because of that, let us see how the relation with India and USA has changed. One thing you can say for sure is that in the last 20 years, because of such a huge change, the because of huge change in the power of China, the relationship between India and China, relationship between USA and China has fell in disequilibrium. Completely has changed. Friends, see in international relations. The type of relationship between two countries depends upon the relative power. It's just like human beings. For example, today, if I am far lesser than you in the financial power or political power, your relation with me will be different. You may ask me that, Shad, go and get you know something for the, from the shop for me. And when tomorrow I become equal to you, you may say that, Hi, Sharat, is it possible for you to go to shop and get something for me or I will go and get something like this. And day after tomorrow, when I become so powerful than you, you may say that, uh, Hi, I know you are busy, so maybe if you want something, tell me, I will go to shop and get it for you. You understand the change in dynamic relationship. In the international relation, type of relation between the countries depend upon the relative power. As this relative power has changed completely, differently the relation also changed between China, USA, China, India. Now, definitely China is not interested to maintain the same relation that it maintained in 2000. For example, with India, China does not want to maintain an equal relationship. It wants to maintain a hegemonic relationship. 
a hierarchical relationship. It wants to show India that it is far better than India. It wants India to accept such a relationship. For example, as a proof, you can tell a few things. For a proof, for example, you can draw a map and say that China is building China-Pakistan economic corridor. China-Pakistan economic corridor from Xinjiang to Gwadar to Gwadar in Pakistan. So it is it is least bothered about the sensitivities of India. It is just going to construct the CPEC again as the will of India. Even in the Indian Ocean region, in the Indian Ocean region, China is increasing its capabilities, military power, without uh, you know without heeding to the talks with talks of India, without heeding to what India is selling to China. In one way, you know, also China is building lot of ports, ports and roads, you know, and other infrastructure in most of the South Asian countries because China wants to dominate the South Asian region. It does not want India to be the leader of South Asian region. So you can use these proofs to show that India, China wants hierarchical relationship with India. Now coming to USA, USA, you know, uh, previously China was far lesser than USA. But now it is trying to become equal to USA. It wants USA to recognize China as an equal power. That is why it's investing in the one belt, one road to increase its you know relationship with several countries across the world. It wants all the countries across the world to accept China as you know the most important power equal to USA. Another point you can say is that China is in one way, if you observe carefully, see for example, this is a world map. You can draw the whole map here, North America, Alaska, you see, Greenland, Africa, Saudi Arabia, the Europe, Europe, the India, and Australia. See, actually, China is ready to accept America as the primacy, the prime power in the East Pacific Ocean and some part of Atlantic. Whereas, China wants USA to accept China as the power in Indo-Pacific region. So it's like it wants to be equal to USA. It wants to give USA the Western Hemisphere. It wants USA to give to China the Eastern Hemisphere. This kind of relationship is what China wants. That's what we understand from the actions of China. Now friends, coming to the third part of the question. Third part of the question. Do you think a Cold War is arising, new Cold War? You can say yes or you can say no. For example, I want to say yes. Okay. So that's why my answer will be in the direction of yes. You can say that USA and India are not ready to accept the new relationship with China. Now China has got two options. One thing is to force India to accept its hegemonic power or hierarchical power. China is trying to make a proxy war with India. In fact, India and China both are nuclear powers. So definitely China cannot you know, go for a war with India. So this this makes China to come to the second second option. Second uh, uh, second option is Cold War. Now I'm talking regarding India. I'll talk in USA also. Cold War. For example, just like how USA and USSR previously had Cold War, in those days USA wants to show that it was more powerful, and USSR wants to show it was more powerful. But both of them could never go for direct war because both of them are nuclear powers. So what they have done is they have increased their ambit across other countries across the world, may it be Korea, may it be Vietnam, etc. Similarly, coming to India and China, India is trying to force a strategic relationship with the Western countries, particularly USA, USA, whereas China is trying to become close to Russia. And also, in the South Asian region, both India and China are trying to become strong, you know, are trying to forge strong relationship with almost every country South Asian region. Even in the Indian Ocean region, India is trying to increase its naval power. Even China, of course China is far beyond India, but China is still increase, try to, trying to increase its submarines and ships across the Indian Ocean. Coming to USA through OBOR, through OBOR and also through you know the BRICS Bank and also uh, through the China's financial power, it is trying to give soft loans. In fact, it is trying to bring those countries into debt trap. China has given huge loans for Maldives, 
you know, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, because of which those countries are coming debt trap. So in that way, China is going to gradually become more powerful and forge strong relationship with across many with, across with many countries. So the second point you can write is even USA is working in the direction of the Cold War. Direction of the Cold War. For example, USA is considering China as ideological rival. For example, in the US USSR relationship also, of course, finally USSR lost. USSR broke down in 1991 because its economic system and political system was not stable. Similarly, USA is trying to wage ideological war with China. Even USA is trying to, you know, build strong partners in the Asian region. For example, India, Vietnam, Indonesia. Even in the South China Sea, USA is propagating freedom of navigation, freedom of navigation, freedom of overflight, and freedom of above the overflight also. So in that way, you know, a cold war is going on between USA and China. Now, even in the in the wake of COVID-19, in the wake of COVID-19, USA is trying to decouple its economy with China. As the economy of USA is very well integrated with China, it wants to cut that, it wants to decouple, you know, so that the China, US economy will no more have much vulnerabilities of China. Now, coming to India, you can say, do you think India, previously when USA, USSR, Cold War was going on, India maintained non-alignment. So now will India maintain that? Or non-alignment in the sense, India will maintain equal distance from USA and China and maintain equal relationship with USA and China. Another thing is, will India go close to USA and avoid China? Which one? In fact, uh, looking at the direction India is going on, we can say India is going close to USA and trying to go away from China. Not in the trade, but in the you know political relationship. For example, even in the 1962, after 1962 war, Nehru, Nehru clearly mentioned that there is no non-alignment with China. Even during the 1971 war, before the war, Indira Gandhi went to Soviet Union to ask for help so that China will not help Pakistan. Even USA will not interfere in the war. Even from 2013, if you observe carefully, China is slowly trying to dominate India. Even in 2020, from last few months, from April, in the border, unprovoked, unprovoked shelling done by China, you know, along the Indian border. One more last point that you can say is that India is working with USA and other Western countries and also with the South Asian countries, particularly to become, you know, to avoid China or to cut the importance of China in the South Asian region. Why? Because India is clearly seeing that China is occupying territory. Already China occupied certain territory of India. China already occupied certain territory of India, this part, the accession. And now they are and, and, and claiming almost entire uh, Arunachal Pradesh, entire Ladakh, etc. So friends, how do you conclude this? Conclude, as I told you, 10 marks question already, we wrote too many points. Try to, try to conclude in just two or three lines. You can say that China clearly is trying to make India accept that China is far more powerful. That is why from 2013, it is forcing India, forcing against India, in the South Asian region, in the Indian Ocean region, and recent border skirmishes, it is not accepting any of the agreements made with India. India-China made several agreements between 2000 to 2013. But after 2013, China is not giving importance to those agreements because those agreements were made when India and China are almost equal powers. But now China is far more powerful. It does not want to maintain those agreements. In that way, you can actually end your answer, friends. So the question for tomorrow is this one. I'm not sure whether I can, I, you know, by the way, some of the students are asking me to give the questions from UPSC. That's why I gave the UPSC mains 2019 question, General Studies paper 3. This question actually is question 19 in the UPSC paper. So for, for next one week, I may not be answering the questions regularly because I know that most of you are focusing on the prelims. So again, after October 4th, I will make it regular. So see you friends. Take care.